This is how to cut your driver down the fun way. Right, let's get to the workshop and do some damage. Just a side note, the workshop has been improved since I made that last video. Sorry about the mess, but uh, this is uh, what we've got. First thing I want to do is I want to take the head off of here. So I want to loosen that off, turn and a half setting there. So I want to go back to that when I get it back in. Damn. Okay, so heads off. I can put that to the side for a minute. The first thing I need to do is remove this tip and this is how I do it. So I've got a kit with a few different screws that go into different size adapters and it's got a washer on the end here. Now you can remove this ferrule and push the tip away, but I'd rather pull from here so this all stays intact. Right, this is my shaft extractor, so I just want to wind this part back. And what this basically does is it pulls things away from a clamped shaft. And there's enough room there. This goes in here, that goes on there. Put the shaft in, I'll get this in. <clears throat> and I've done so many of these. I got an old shaft and I clamped it as hard as I could until it cracked, just so I know how far I can go in terms of tightening it. So when you're first using anything like this, grab an old shaft and stress test it. I'm pulling this one, so that's pulling the, sh the tip away. So it's just putting a bit of pressure on it. So I've got a bit of pressure there. And then heat gun on this bit. And then once that glue breaks down, that pressure will just pop it off and then I'll carry on. Gradually adding more pressure here to get more pressure pulling away. There we go. Easy as that. And I keep going all the way. Now that tip is really moved. This comes out. So I've got a bucket of water down here and I get that straight in there to get that thing to cool down. Wipe off any of the old bits of glue, you get a bit of white dust there, it comes away. Okay, so we'll see a little cap in the end, that comes out, that can go away. So there's some old glue on here, I just want to get that off, normally with some pliers around there, just to crack it, crack, 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 crack. And then I use an old grip wrapped around the ferrule, and that should come off. Sometimes that's a pain, and if it's too much of a pain, I just cut it off. But if I can save the original bit, it makes life a bit easier. Mainly because I know that one fits perfectly. Now I've got a measuring device here that shows me how thick the tip is at the end. And I'm just looking for where it starts getting bigger. It starts getting bigger about there. So I've got quite a lot of room where it's the same size to work with. So I could cut an inch, I could cut two inches. The standard length of this driver is 46 inches. Now one of the reasons that we do this is that we're moving the fatter part of shaft towards the head. So we're getting the chunkier bit of shaft in play that's a bit stiffer. If we take it off from this end, we technically get the thin a part of shaft in the head so I much prefer this and I want to see how much more beneficial it is because it is a bit of extra work the other method is to take the grip off cut the shaft put the grip back on fairly simple this one's a bit more long-winded now I've always got a sharpie in my pocket so I want to mark one and a half inches feels like a lot of shaft to cut off I'm gonna go an inch one inch is there I'm gonna use some insulation tape here now it's a good idea to do this because graphite shafts can splinter I'm gonna wrap this on the one inch marker that I've got, I put the tape and then I go around a couple of times, well, three or four times, and then I go up. So when I go up, I can basically see, so where I've gone up, I can basically see the lip here that is the inch line marker. And then I hacksaw this bit away. Tighten that in there a little bit, and then I've got that marker to go by. I get just over halfway and then I want to loosen it, spin it round and clamp it again and then I go at it from a different angle. Beautiful. It's always easier with a fresh blade. All right, that tape comes off. Now there'll be some residue left in the adapter. Now if there's still stuff left in there, probably good to actually put that in a drill. I've just got some screwdrivers, scrape this around here, get all the old glue out. Now one thing I do like to do is score the inside of the ferrule, like that, just to give the glue a little bit more space to sort of grip into. I don't necessarily need to do that, I just feel better for it. So, how far off have I got? If I put that adapter on, the ferrule's gonna go a little bit further, but I want to prep all this area here that's left. 
So I've always got sanding discs lying around. I can do it with a sanding disc. I just want to rough up this paint, get this paint off. Now I do use a belt sander over here. And my favorite bit is making sure that you can blow through the end. Cool, because I want the air to be able to go up the shaft. I like these because they're quite easy to hold. You want to get quite an even sanding scoring. Cool, ready. Okay, so I'll come out here just for a little bit more elbow room. So this is a spine finder. So you've got some ball bearings here, ball bearings here. Every shaft has a point where it's harder. Now I want to find that harder point and I want to put that facing the target. From tests I've done before, you get a lower peak height, which is one thing I'm after. Oh, there it is. So there's two spines in this one, and they're a 180 away from each other, which is absolutely ideal. So I'm going to mark on here that spine. So I've marked the spine, I've got the head. I'm going to put the adapter back in the head and screw it in. So 10 and a half degrees, the same one. So I'm pushing down with my finger there just to make sure it's got the same pressure. That gets in. Click, lovely jubbly. This shaft is ready to go in one inch shorter. Throw it on the shaft, head goes in. I'm just pushing it in to kind of test it, make sure it gets all the way in. This goes in here, see how far I've got. Make sure I've got all of that distance in there. There's one millimeter missing. So I need that to go in one millimeter more. Bang on the floor. There we go. So that's where the ferrule just had to push up over the normal paint. Next thing is to drill that in with the spine in the spot that I want, then we're ready to go. For this final bit, I'm using some epoxy that is five minute setting stuff. I'd normally use glue that takes longer because if someone comes in or the phone goes or anything like that, I want to be able to function as a business because it is only me here. But I'm using quicker set stuff so I can get this video completed today. A bit of that and a bit of that. Now if you love this sort of stuff, don't forget to subscribe. I hate asking, but you know, I'm nearly a thousand subscribers. If I can get to a thousand by Christmas, I will be very happy. I'm currently at 847. And this is just a little bit of basically glass powder. So I'll put them there just to thicken the glue up and just to fill any gap that we get in the club. Mixy, mixy. With my other glue, it takes four hours to set, 12 hours to cure. So I need to work fast when I've got this. Hopefully no one comes in. There we go. Get that all on the inside and around the top. I normally put a little bit extra in just for luck and weld that around the inside. Lovely. We get this over the end of the shaft as well. Just trying to cover every bit of surface area, right down to the ferrule and on the tip as well. Make sure that's all nice and covered. Beautiful. Get the head, put it in. I like to spin it as I put the club in. And then we get some excess coming out the edges. And I use that golf tee just to take the excess off. Beautiful. And some tissue paper just to get that last final bit of glue off. If you take too long doing this, that glue can start setting. And that's not ideal. And the cleaner you get this now, the easier life is later. So, I get the club face here. And I go along and I want that spine that I found to face the target. So I keep spinning it until I get my little black mark. And that's going in the same direction as the club face. Beautiful. So that can throw the decal on the shaft into a funny place. I pretty much don't care where the decals go, but sometimes people like them on the bottom. But every club that I build, I check the spine and I react accordingly. Bonk. I absolutely 100% swear by spine aligning. Right, let's tidy all this up. So the last little bit is to use some acetone just to tidy up the last bit of the shaft. So acetone is like a nail polish remover. Put this around there, spin it around. It should come off nice and clean. Beautiful. See you next time.